Hi there. So I am doing this recording uh, so that I can talk a little bit about this photograph in particular and show what I might do with it in Photoshop to uh, improve it a bit. Um, I think it has so much potential. Uh, the activity in here is great. And one thing that I really like about it is it reminds me of a lot of famous um, battle paintings. And I know that might sound silly, but um, I'm thinking of paintings like Washington Crossing the Delaware. Um, we've got this Pearson painting, um, and then this guy as well, a famous uh, Goya painting, and uh, just the all the variety of poses um, that the characters are caught in, and the drama of the, mov the movement and the action um, really makes me think of uh, these types of paintings. I also like, uh, so many of these paintings take place kind of on a horizontal plane, uh, and there's a clear foreground, midground, background going on in the composition, um, and I think the potential for this um, to be the situation here in this photo, uh, it's got a great start on that, because all of this activity is happening right here in this middle plane. Um, not a whole lot in the foreground here, other than number one and number six here, uh, and then the background uh, is maybe a little bit distracting when compared to uh, something like this. So uh, what I'm going to do is going to work on uh, this photo in, in Photoshop to try and uh, match, uh, not match obviously, that's a painting, but get us closer to that uh, kind of experience. So I've got the photo opened in Camera Raw here, and I am just going to do a um, very basic adjustment here in terms of exposure. Um, I think this is a very well exposed photograph, and so I'm just going to uh, start off here, and I'm going to make sure that my highlights aren't clipped at all. Um, so I'm going to turn on up here the stuff that shows where my highlights are kind of overdriven, and I'm going to bring that down. I'm talking about the, the white value now, the overall total brightness. Highlights are just going to work on these uh, brightest white areas. And then I want to make sure I can see into the shadows a lot. Again, so that I can play with uh, the contrast. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to open it in Photoshop, maximize Photoshop here, and we can go ahead and zoom in on our photo. So uh, what I would do first is uh, I would work to get my picture feeling like it had a foreground, midground, and background. Um, and so I could make an adjustment layer and really blur out uh, the foreground and midground and background, but I'm going to try for starters to just use the blur tool and see if I'm happy with how that goes. Um, so I'll come over here and uh, grab my blur tool, which is going to be underneath the sharpen tool, which is what I have selected right there. So I'm going to click and hold and grab the blur tool, and then I need a bigger brush, but I also need it to be somewhat soft maybe not completely soft, fuzzed out, but a little bit, so that the transition isn't too noticeable. And I'm just going to come over here, and the main thing I'm worried about here is the number on her back, because it just jumps right off the screen at me. Now I could crop her out, um, but I like having some space here for the ball to go, so I don't want to crop right here and get, you know, a little bit of her hip left in there. So I'm not going to crop the image uh, that way. And I don't think we need it to be extremely blurred. And we don't need number six here to be as blurry as number one. But I do want them to be less in focus. Again, this is all just to guide the eye of my audience. And I want to indicate to them that they don't need to be paying as much attention to this part of the photograph. But I might want to be a little more forceful with the background than the foreground, uh, just to really work that feeling of shallow depth of field. But before I do that, I want to take a look at the overall composition. And um, I do have some concerns uh, about the cropping of this image. And so I think I might actually crop it a little bit. There's this weird arm back here, which I don't really need in the shot, and I feel like there's a good deal of empty space here that maybe I don't need. Uh, so I'm just going to go and get my crop tool, which is right here, and I'm going to bring down the sky a little bit, and it's, for some reason it's set to golden triangle. I'm just going to, yeah, we can put it on the rule of thirds here, and I'm just going to crop out that hand, and 
Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe a little less sky. You can see where that puts uh, our main character there in terms of the rule of thirds. Um, and I'm actually looking at where the ball fits in this image. And if you divided this third into thirds, the ball kind of fits right there as well. Now we're going to talk about blurring out the background a little bit. I want to add an effect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate our background layer by dragging it down to the new layer. And I'm going to rename it Blur Layer. And I'm going to go ahead and just put on the blur effect. So I'm coming up here to Filter, and I'm going to go to Blur and Lens Blur. And so it'll give me some options here. It'll show me what's going on. Now keep in mind, it's going to show me the entire uh, photo. I'm going to go and get my hand tool, which is down here. And what I want to do is I want to, if it will let me, I want to zoom in and really just look at the background here. Pay attention to how out of focus I would like the background to be. So I'm going to increase the radius, and maybe we used a lens with nice, uh, a lot of aperture blades, so an octagonal shaped uh, iris, and maybe they were curvy, so it has all these kind of options to it. And when I'm happy with where the cars land, you know, I don't want them to go too crazy, what I'm going to do is say, okay, and now what I need to do is get back to this idea of having a foreground, a midground, and a background. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, two things. I'm going to create a layer mask that makes it so that this blur only happens on the portion of this image that I want it to, so not on our midground here where our activity is happening. So I'm going to add a layer mask down here on the lower right. I'm just going to add a layer mask to the blur layer. And now here's my thinking on blurs. If, if we're recreating shallow depth of field, uh, then this is going to be fo in focus, and the background um, is going to travel out of focus slowly. It'll get less and less and less in focus. So what that makes me think of is a gradient. Uh, and what I mean by gradient is if I come up here to the gradient tool, um, I think of something going from light to dark. I know that doesn't make sense for a blur. We're talking about focus here, but bear with me. So um, remember in the world of masks that white means the layer is on, black means that part of the layer is off. So what I want to do is make a gradient that goes from black down here, so we're cutting through down to the lower layer where things are in focus, going to white where we do see this blur layer happening. So I'm going to just grab my gradient tool, which is set to black to white, and I'm just going to drag it up here. I don't have to undo, I can just redraw it, and you'll notice that the mask over here changes. And so we're starting to see the in-focus layer now uh, in, our, in our foreground. We're cutting through down to that. I may want to have the transition be a little wider, uh, the transition area. Okay, so now I'm watching my background basically in the grass here, transition from in-focus to out-of-focus. Um, and so now I just need to get my foreground back. Uh, in my midground here. And so basically everyone except this character over here, I would like to be more in focus than they are. And perhaps this person back here, uh, hopefully you guys can see that when I get my uh, cursor back, but perhaps this person in the black and yellow here, I would want to be a little out of focus. So I'm just going to add areas to this mask where I want the blur layer to be cut out. So I'm going to grab a paintbrush and I'll keep it relatively small so I don't go crazy. And select my mask there. And so this looks to be a good size for doing most of these folks here. And again, I, I don't want it to be particularly soft because we would expect some well-defined edges here. So I'm going to go for something like a, only slightly softer. And then I can just start working away painting on my mask. I've got my mask selected, and I'm just going to put black. I have the color black selected, opacity 100%. I am just going to gently bring back my characters here. And then, as you can see, I'm going to need to change my brush size in some of these locations. And remember that she should be fairly out of focus uh, because of the fact that we blurred her originally. So now I'm just going to speed things up here so you don't have to watch a lot, but you get the idea. I'm using this mask to block out the blur layer in certain key areas.
Now, I'm using a gray brush because it will take away some of the blur layer, but not all of it. I still have to be careful to not get too far into the area that we want to be blurry. Again, if I make a mistake, I can go back to a white brush and get that fixed. This is a fairly uh, time-consuming process, so I'm just going to zip through it here, but what I'm doing is just refining the edges um, between my blur layer and my in-focus layer. Now that I've got my blur layer uh, pretty well defined and refined with this mask cutting out uh, and sharpening the areas in our mid-ground. I want to work on the lighting a little bit and get back into that uh, drama that we saw in the George Washington painting a little bit more. And I remember that uh, George had a big kind of light splotch around him. It was as if the sun was shining through the clouds behind him. And since we have kind of a grayish cloudy sky here, maybe I can do something to duplicate that. There are a lot of different ways I could uh, go about making this lighting a little bit more dramatic. I'm going to go with one of the simplest, which is to add an adjustment layer to the whole image, uh, which we'll put it up on top here. And I am going to go just with a simple brightness and contrast adjustment. And so what I'm looking to do is get a little more uh, depth, uh, well, a little more darkness, if you will, in the sky, uh, so we can see a little bit more color uh, and a little bit more uh, contrast and maybe make it so the sky isn't as light as their uniforms so their uniforms stand out a little bit more so I am going to click on my actual adjustment and up here I have my controls and so I'm just going to dial that brightness down a little bit in the overall image and I may bring the contrast up a bit but watch what happens it just gets a little out of control there so I want to be careful with the contrast and not go too extreme with it. You also notice up here her face is turning kind of blotchy when I play too much with that uh, contrast. I'll show you a little tweak for that in a minute, but for now I want to go back to this idea of that big bright patch behind George Washington, so maybe I go back to having the sky brighter, but just around uh, our main character here who's going for the ball. So again, I'm gonna get back to that idea of a gradient, having a transition uh, f from the layer being effective to the layer not being effective. So right now the layer is darkening everything. I'm going to grab my gradient, my black to white, or in this case I've got it set black to gray, and I'm going to make it the circular shape up here. And from there I'm just going to try to make myself a little mask that uh, will make it so... and I'm actually not happy with that. I want to go back to my black and white mask. We'll make it so that there's kind of a bright patch behind her, and I can just keep drawing it till I get something I'm happy with. Maybe I don't want it right behind her head. Uh, something like that, and maybe I don't want it quite so extreme. We'll figure it out. I'm thinking maybe moving that down a little bit. So maybe I actually have to start here. And now that I see that, I can come back and work on my look a little bit more. Just want to make sure that I get that difference uh, between the area behind her and everywhere else. Uh, and now I can come in again with a black paintbrush because I want to turn off this darkness, and I can just really um, refine this and start to uh, start to look at areas, aspects of the image that I want to show off. Here I'll lighten up the ball a little bit, get some visuals back into some of the more prominent characters here. They need a smaller brush. So once I'm pretty happy with the light values there, I think it's added a little bit more drama and guided our eye a little bit more away from the background to the foreground. Um, you know, it's not the height of realism, but it is... Um, it's taking a little artistic license to help tell the story visually. So then I'm just going to go back down to my background layer when I'm happy with that and do a little cleanup that I talked about. Uh, I'm going to grab the sharpen tool over here and just uh, kind of hit some of the areas where I really want detail to stand out. So in our superstars area here, just adding a little bit of sharpness, even though there's motion blur going on, this will give it an appearance of sharpness that isn't necessarily there, uh, but the ball is really important to me and the interaction between these uh, women who are involved in the what I'm guessing is a set piece here. Um, just really want to call attention to 
parts of the image here so we can really see how everyone's relating to each other. And that's about it. I'm pretty happy with how this photo's come out, and uh, hopefully you are too. Hopefully it's given you some inspiration for going forward with this image or any other. Thanks.